In this video, we're going to do the even numbers 2 through 18 on the absolute value equation worksheet. I'll leave a link in the description below of how to get to that through the CUDA software website. So for number two, we have the absolute value of negative 6x equals 30. That means that this negative 6x is either negative 30 or a positive 30. That's because the absolute value of either of those is equal to that positive 30. So first we're going to do the math for when negative 6x equals a negative 30. And we divide by negative 6 on both sides to get that x is equal to a positive 5. Then we're going to do the math for when that negative 6x equals a positive 30. Dividing by negative 6, we're going to get that x equals a negative 5. So for number 2, x is either equal to a negative 5 or it's equal to a positive 5. And those are the two options that that variable x can be. Let's move on to number 4. Number 4 says the absolute value of x divided by 7 equals 3. That means that this x divided by 7 is either equal to a negative 3 or it's equal to a positive 3. So when x divided by 7 equals a negative 3, we're multiplying by 7 over 1, or simply 7, to get that x is equal to a negative 21. If we assume that the x over 7 is equal to a positive 3, when we multiply by 7 over 1, we get that x is equal to a positive 21. So for number 4, we have that x is either negative 21 or positive 21. For number 6, we have the absolute value of negative 3p equals 15. So we're saying that negative 3p equals either negative 15 or a positive 15. So if it equals a negative 15, we're going to get that p is equal to a positive 5. If negative 3p equals a positive 15, when we divide by negative 3, we're going to get that p equals a negative 5. So in the case of number 6, p is either negative 5 or positive 5. In number 8, they switch it up a bit, and they have the absolute value of m divided by 5 equals 3. We need to isolate this absolute value of m so we know the options m can be. We do this by starting with multiplying by 5 over 1 to each side. Doing so, the 5's will essentially cancel out because 5 divided by 5 is simply 1, and we know that any quantity over 1 is just that original quantity. So we'll have the absolute value of m on one side equaling 15 on the other. So now we know that this m can either equal a negative 15, since the absolute value of negative 15 equals 15, or it can equal a positive 15, since the absolute value of positive 15 is also 15. Moving on to number 10, again, we need to isolate that absolute value of m. So we need to get that by itself, and in order to do that, we're going to start by subtracting a 2 from both sides. That'll leave us with the absolute value of m equaling a positive 9. Since the absolute value of m equals 9, that means that this m is either equal to a negative 9 or it equals a positive 9. Moving on to number 12, we're isolating this absolute value of x. We're going to do that by multiplying by 7 over 1 to get that the absolute value of x equals a positive 35. That means that x, that variable, either equals a negative 35 or it equals a positive 35 because the absolute value of either of those quantities is a positive 35. For number 14, we have 4 times the absolute value of n plus 8 equals 56. We're going to have to start by dividing by that positive 4 on the outside. 
When we do that, we're going to be left with the absolute value of n plus 8. So we've isolated that now on the left-hand side. And that's going to be equal to 14 on the right, since 56 divided by 4 is 14. Since the absolute value of n plus 8 equals 14, this n plus 8 either equals a negative 14 or it equals a positive 14. So let's do the math for when n plus 8 equals a negative 14. We're going to start by subtracting from 8 on both sides to get that n is equal to a negative 22. Now, when n plus 8 equals the positive 14, we're going to subtract the 8 and get that n is equal to a positive 6. So for number 14, n can either equal a negative 22 or n can equal 6. Number 16, we have x divided by 7. The absolute value of that quantity, minus 8, equals a negative 7. We need to isolate that absolute value, so we're going to start by adding 8 to both sides. When we do that, we get that the absolute value of x over 7 is equal to negative 7 plus 8, which is a positive 1. Now we know that this x over 7, since it's the absolute value of that equaling 1, we know that that is either a negative 1 or it's a positive 1. So when x over 7 equals a negative 1, we're going to multiply by 7 on both sides to get that x equals a negative 7. When x over 7 equals that positive 1 option, when we multiply both sides by 7, we get that x is equal to a positive 7. So for number 16, x, the variable, can either be negative 7 or positive 7. Either is correct. And lastly, on this absolute value equation worksheet, number 18. We have negative 10 times the absolute value of v plus 2 equals negative 70. We're going to start by dividing by a negative 10 on both sides. That will help us isolate the absolute value of v plus 2 on the left, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we're going to get a positive 7 on the right. Since we're taking the absolute value of that quantity, that's either going to equal a negative 7 or a positive 7. So when v plus 2 equals a negative 7, subtracting 2 from both sides, we get that v is equal to a negative 9. And when v plus 2 equals that positive 7 option, when we subtract 2 from both sides, we get that v is equal to a positive 5. So for number 18, our answers or our options that this variable v is equal to is either negative 9 or a positive 5. So with that being the last problem, please don't forget to like this video and also please subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be updated when I post new videos. Also, please feel free to comment below if you have any questions on the absolute value or a specific problem from your own homework that you need help on. But again, don't forget to give me a thumbs up on this video.